Thank you for having me. Um, today, we're going to talk about R Markdown and notebooks. Uh, we're not going to cover R Markdown itself very much, uh, but R Markdown and notebooks, we're going to demonstrate some uh, work that we have uh, in progress. It's not shipping yet, but it's coming up soon. Uh, and I'm actually going to introduce a couple of new packages today that are, that are derivative from, of, of R Markdown that I think are both pretty exciting. So first, why R Markdown? And I think why R and why R Markdown both derive from this prime directive, which is trustworthy computing. The consequences of data analysis, or data analysis itself, has a lot of consequences in the modern world. And so we basically need to have a process by which we do it that's trustworthy and has integrity. For, for data analysis itself, that means we write code. We don't point and click. We write code to do analysis. For the results of our analysis, it means we, we work in a reproducible tool chain, not cut and paste things into Office. So that's kind of where the motivation comes from. How many people here have, uh, know what R Markdown is or have used R Markdown? OK, so good. I'm not going to explain. This slide here, two years ago, or certainly four years ago, I would have spent three minutes telling you about why reproducibility is important, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to do that. I think most people are on board. Again, I'm not going to cover the basics of R Markdown. I think for those who haven't used it, you'll get the idea. OK, some history. Um, there's been a lot of projects that have influenced and sort of are in parallel with R Markdown and notebooks. Um, R itself has had a literate programming system for a long time, since 2002, uh, SWEAV, which was based on combining R and LaTeX. Um, Emacs Org Mode, Emacs Org R, Org Babel have been systems that have been text-based systems for document um, composition that lets you mix code and output. Together, there's the Markdown project itself, and then you have all the modern uh, data analysis notebooks like IPython Jupyter, Beaker, uh, Apache Zeppelin, et cetera. So all these things are kind of influencing each other and moving in parallel. It's just important to kind of recognize all that historical context. OK, so our Markdown and notebooks, there's actually many, many similarities. And, and in, in a way, like they both have a reproducible workflow by default. You can re rerun your whole analysis from scratch and uh, you get the same result. Um, they mix code output and narrative in a single document. Uh, they have some way of doing interactive widgets in line. And there's a notion of outputting to different formats, HTML or PDF or what have you. So there's very similar goals and similar, um, but, there's, but there's, there are some important differences. And I think these are actually not intrinsic differences. I think they're differences of emph emphasis and orientation. Um, one big difference uh, for our markdown is that it, it uses a plain text representation. So you're, what you're working on is a text file. It's an RMD file. And that means you use the same editor for our markdown uh, that you use for our scripts. So you use VI or Emacs or RStudio or Eclipse or Visual Studio, whatever it is, you're going to use the same editor because it's just a text file. And that means we can diff it. You can put it into version control and you get a sane diff when you're comparing changes. Another thing, again, it's a point of emphasis. Our markdown has focused on production output. The output formats are extensible, and there are dozens of them. Um, and that, I think, uh, traditional notebooks can have different types of output, like through NB convert and things, but it hasn't been as much of a focus of the community. On the other hand, uh, you know, the, the fundamental thing here is our markdown has, has had a batch orientation. It's like knit the document, run it, get the output, one shot. Uh, and notebooks are more interactive. Again, they can be run batch. But there, a lot of it's about actually working through the document, one sort of cell at a time. And so you see that the output is in line with the code as you work. Uh, the output is sort of stored in a single file. The code and output are in a single file. You can share just that file. Uh, the consumer has the code and the output. And, um, and therefore, the output can be cached across sessions. Um, so I think what we want, where we want to go, is we want our markdown to be able to do both of these things. We want it, if you want a batch execution model, that's focused on producing your final production output, you have that. If you want an interactive execution model, you can have that too. And these things like inline output and putting things in a single file, you should be able to do those also with R Markdown. So that's kind of the focus of some of the work that we've done recently. Um, before I show you that work, I want to emphasize this, this plain text representation is really critical because it, there is no special editor. There's no special application for R Markdown. There's just a text file. Use Notepad if you want. Use you know, VI with no, no add-ins, if you want. Or use any of these um, tool chains here that have all have add-ins for working with R Markdown. So we love the fact that it's plain text. 
We love the fact that we can diff it. Hopefully, I don't need to explain why this is important, um, but we love that. Um, and I think one of the things, one of the things we're, investments that we're going to make in um, our upcoming work is to make it so you can diff both, both the source code, but also diff the output. So as you run your analysis, you can see an insane diff of the output and see what's changed in the output. And then our output formats. I'll show you a couple of these later on, but um, there's a lot of output formats available for R Markdown. These are the ones that are shipped with the R Markdown package. You can see a lot of ones you'd expect. There's a bunch of different um, presentation formats. Um, there's the articles package, which has LaTeX-based journal article templates. You can, build, you can create sort of valid journal articles for all these um, using articles. The Tufty package lets you build these really nice um, ways of communicating uh, data and ideas based on the sort of style of Edward Tufty. These are PDF or HTML-based. That's another package that has output formats. And then there's another package called RMD formats, which has some alternate HTML renderings that are based on principally on documentation uh, systems, uh, some popular documentation systems, and how they render uh, technical content. All right, so let me show you a little bit of what we've been working on. Um, let me just make sure the, uh, does everybody see the text okay here? No? I don't know how important it is to see. Let me just take it, I'll take the zoom level up one. Is that, hopefully that's a little bit better. All right, so what I'm showing you here is, um, a standard R Markdown document. It's got code chunks. It's got, this is like chat, the modeling chapter from the R for Data Science book. Uh, it's got code chunks. It's got text. And typically, I would just knit this. I'd say, OK, I'm done working. I want to see what it looks like knit. OK. So what I'll show you here is now if I've got a chunk, I can just execute it, and the output shows up in line. Here, I can execute. It shows up in line. If I want to tweak stuff, I can say, great race. Re-execute it, I get race, sex, re-execute it, I get sex. I can clear the chunk. I can rerun it. So the output is inline, so very similar to a conventional notebook system, but it's still in, in the RMD editor. It's still an R Markdown document. All right, let's do, look at an example with graphics. So here I'll start with like the simplest possible ggplot graph, or one of the simplest possible. The zoom is kind of messing us up here, so I'll just do that. All right, so now let's say I want to add uh, point GM, and I get that, and I say smooth, and I get that. So I can basically tweak, uh, this, isn't, hang on, this isn't newsworthy for anyone who's seen a conventional notebook system, but I, I'm tweaking my code and my output, and all the output appears in line, um, again, right within the RMD editor. So I can, you know, as I move back and forth through my document, my output is still there. Uh, at some point, I can say, well, I don't really want this to take up space, so I'll collapse it, and then I'll expand it. So that's kind of graphics. Um, I want to talk a little bit about kind of the, the on-disk model or the persistence model. Here you can see another document that's got a bunch of chunks already executed. And um, if I close this and then reopen it, let's see here. Notice when I reopen it, I've still got the chunk. So basically, it still has the output in it. So when I, you know, I can be in another R session or another machine, I bring the document back, and I still have the output. Um, we still have the concept. You know, traditionally, you would knit these documents. You can still say, I want to run all. So let's run all the chunks. And it runs uh, it was really fast. Just ran them all. OK, I can run all the chunks. I can say, well, I want to restart R and then run all the chunks. So more like a classic knit, where I want a clean session and then run everything to make sure it all works. Or I can say restart and clear the output. I want to work fresh. Um, here I can do it. I'll show that sort of tweaking again, where I, you know, I'm trying to make my plot look good. So I change the title. No, I didn't like that. Change it back. Now, I'm, I'm, what happens now is the, the RMD file is here. But you can see next to the RMD file is written this notebook HTML file. OK, so if I open this, this is an HTML file that actually has it looks like a regular HTML document. It has some extra stuff for showing and hiding code. You know, I can say hide all or show all. But what's interesting about this file is it actually has not just the output, it actually has the full R Markdown document inside it. And so if, if I give this to someone else and they don't have RStudio, or if I put this on a web server, it's just going to render as HTML. If I give this to somebody who's got RStudio or another editor that knows how to understand it, they can open this up and actually get into the R Markdown source and start playing around with it and tweaking it. The view they'll actually see is this. So this is that compound file that has 
code and output together. Now, none of this prevents me from saying, uh, you know, that's great. That's great for doing my analysis. I'm still creating a PDF here. I'm still creating a Word document. I'm still creating something else. So I can say I can knit this, and it'll go through the regular R Markdown tool chain, and I'll end up with you know, a nice PDF um, of the same document. So it's really we're saying, yes, have a notebook, output in line, one file with code and output, but also, yes, let's have all the formats that we want to render production output to. Uh, I also wanted to show that um, we've shown text, we've shown regular R graphics, HTML widgets, which are JavaScript widgets in R, also work. So here's you know, D3 heat map, um, and that works just the same way as plots do. Um, I have leaflet, so that also similarly works just the same way as plots work. So HTML widgets work great in the, in the system. I also wanted to show, um, so if I, you know, not, I, I've shown a lot of chunks that execute right away there. It's like a quick spreadsheet calculation. It's like boom, boom, boom. Some things are going to be long running. Sometimes you're going to run the whole thing. It's going to take 20 minutes. I want to give you good feedback for that. So if I say run all here, you can see it's basically going to show me, okay, I've, I'm running. I've already run those lines. I'm running this line right now. It's taking a while. But I've got all this other uh, code is scheduled for execution. It's going to be run. You can continue editing and working. Uh, waiting for it to run, but um, it's scheduled. And so it tells you here, don't run this because it's going to get run eventually. I can interrupt this as you'd expect as well. OK. So that's some of the work that we're doing on notebooks. That's not uh, available now. It's going to be in our next release. Um, and we'll continue to improve and refine that work in the coming weeks and months. I wanted to um, quickly also punctuate the thing about output formats and how many output formats there are and how rich they can be. This is that Tufty format I showed earlier. Um, this is going to be, I think, the PDF version of the Tufty format. And you can see it makes use of margin figures and these side notes, equations in the margin, um, different types of figures that run full width. It's a really, really nice way to, um, to share uh, a, a, an analysis or communication about data. The same exact source document we can knit as, uh, in an HTML version. Um, so this is an HTML web version of the same thing, same source document. Um, We've got a whole bunch of different ways to do presentations. Um, I, we've got good old Beamer. I don't know how many people know Beamer. Yeah, OK. So good old Beamer, we can do that still. Um, but we can also do modern web-based presentation formats like IOSlides, Slidey, uh, Reveal.js. Um, and as there are more and more slide frameworks, we can easily add new formats um, you know, to, to work with them. So that's presentations. And we can do stuff like. Journal articles. Here's you know, a, a template that lets you do write a JSS article with R Markdown. Here's a template that lets you write an ACM short, kind of short paper for the ACM with R Markdown. So again, these are extensible. There's going to be dozens now. There's dozens now. Hopefully, there'll eventually be hundreds of these later on. OK. So I think we've seen all this stuff already in the demo. We don't need the slides. Great. Output formats demo. We've done that. All right. So let's see how much time we have left. All right, great. Uh, two new packages to announce today. Um, they're both R Markdown formats that are quite a bit deeper than the formats I've shown you already. Um, the first one is called Bookdown, and it's for authoring books with R Markdown. So multi-chapter books to many different formats. So HTML books, PDF books, EPUB, Kindle books. Um, any, and there's many, many book formats. Um, the idea is you can have a single set of R Markdown files that render to all those formats. Um, actually, bookdown.org is the web site for this. And you can see there's a bunch of books published up here already. Uh, the new R for Data Science book is a, a Bookdown book, and that's a draft of it is up there. Um, if you want to get started with this, we have instructions here. There's actually tooling in RStudio IDE for building books, which I'll show uh, shortly. And we actually, this Bookdown server, you can actually publish your books with a single R function to the Bookdown server. Uh, if you want to share your book. So we're very excited about this. I'll show you quickly the, um, the tooling for this. So here's my book. I've got um, chapters here. I've got this is just a demo book, simple demo book. I've got four chapters. Uh, inside our studio, it knows about build book. So we say, let's build the web format. And now here's a web book. And it's kind of, it's, it's a nice web book. It's got a lot of the things you'd see like in an ebook reader. Um, you can change text sizes. Uh, really nice. You can do edit this, edit this page. Uh, you can download the other formats, so um, a lot of really nice stuff in there. Or I can say, well, let me do an EPUB book, and that'll render, and it'll show up in iBooks. So um, we're super excited about Bookdown. We're going to write a lot of books with Bookdown, and we hope 
Um, hope that lots of other people do as well. All right, next is a package called Flex Dashboard, which is for creating dashboards with R Markdown. And the idea here is to still work in R Markdown, uh, keep the same really simple layout syntax, and use HTML sections uh, and kind of section markup and attributes to make dashboard layout really, really easy. I'll show you, if I go to the home page here, it'll show you some simple examples, like the simplest dashboard you could ever create would be just like one, two, or three charts filling the page. That's like a really dead simple dashboard. So that's, that's the syntax, three chunks. Um, or you could say, well, I want two columns, and I want one of the columns to be wider than the other two, and so that's how I would express it there. I'd have the columns, and I'd, I'd say, here's, here's the relative width. Or I might say, well, I want two rows, and I want one row, one dashboard on top, or sorry, one chart on top, two on the bottom. And with this syntax and you know, some extensions that are documented, we can create all kinds of different dashboards really easily with our markdown syntax. I've got a couple examples to show here locally. Um, this was Ryan Hafen wrote a, um, uh, a dashboard using demonstrating our bokeh. And so he's, got, he's just got two columns. One's, you know, it's similar to the example layout I had. He's got a wide column and then a smaller column. And now, again, this is still a notebook, right? Just because I'm working on a dashboard doesn't mean I don't get the inline output. So I still have the ability to work in line and tweak my stuff in line. But then when I render it or knit it, I get this dashboard. Simple dashboard, only three plots, but they can scale. You can have multiple pages and menus of pages and all kinds of stuff. You could, you could probably present 30 or 40 plots quite reasonably with this. Um, you can also, this is actually uh, a dashboard by Brian Lewis, who's here today and giving a talk later on, um, which uses Shiny inside our markdown. Uh, this is when you say runtime Shiny. Um, you can basically say, well, I, I want to have a sidebar. Here's my Shiny stuff. Here's my, pl my dynamic Shiny plots. And when I run this, I got, boom, here's my dashboard using Shiny. My sidebar drives what's you know, on the other side. And again, if you look at the syntax, the code for this, I don't know if, you know, it's really quite straightforward. It's just marked down. Uh, I got a setup chunk that let me load my data. I've got a sidebar with just a select input. And I've got a couple little computations I do to render my plots and table. So really, really quite easy. OK. All right, another thing to do, I'm not going to show this today, but another thing to announce that you can check out, it's our Markdown websites, which is similar to Bookdown, but it's sort of say, I just want to make, I want to make a website with our Markdown. I want a collection of pages. And this could be like five pages or it could be 20 pages. Um, if you're familiar with uh, products like Jekyll, which is a static site generator for Ruby, there's actually hundreds of static site generators. This is one for R, and it's all based on R Markdown. Um, we've got documentation on, our web, on the R Markdown website here, R Markdown websites on how to use it. Uh, and actually, the Bookdown website I showed you earlier and the Flex Dashboard website I showed you earlier were built using, both built using R Markdown. So there's that. And then one more thing is we have, we're announcing an RStudio preview release today. Um, some of this is, uh, is motivated by the fact that we want to get these, the book and website tools out there to, to work with websites and books. You want to use the preview release. But there's some other new stuff. We have, um, let's see here, um, enhanced data import tools. We, we redid all of our data import to use Read R, uh, which is much faster than Read CSV, Read Excel for Excel files, and then Haven, which covers uh, st Stata, SAS, SPSS, and a bunch of other formats. Um, so that's all the data imports been overhauled, and that's, you'll find that in the preview release. Um, we also did um, performance profiling based on integration with the Profis package. Most of the heavy lifting is the Profis package, but we do a nice integration of the IDE to show you your profiling data uh, when you run and to sort of stop and start profiling and profile, you know, uh, you know, select a bunch of lines of code and then profile them, that sort of thing. And then finally, the website and book authoring that I, uh, that I demonstrated earlier is in the preview. So if you want to get the preview, you can pretty much just Google for our studio preview, um, and you'll get it. This is the URL um, as well. So 46 seconds left. So. <laughs> <laughs>